Well, prize-winning short fiction author Cheryl Nichol has just published her quirky memoir about growing up in the outskirts of Christchurch in the 1960s, and she is here to tell us all about it. Welcome to the Harvey Norman Lounge, Cheryl. Yes, Thank welcome. You. So nice to have you here. Uh, now, you've published two historical biographies, haven't you, as well as your international prize-winning short fiction. So what made you decide to write your own story? Um, well, I was uh, living in a shed at the time, in a dark, cold, not airless entirely, but um, I needed a bit of stimulation. So I thought, well, I'll do a New Zealand book this time. Um, and it had to be a fun book, because I, I, my other books are quite serious. Um, so that's sort of really how it came about. OK, but I need you to back up slightly. <laughs> you were living in a cold, dark shed. What, what were you doing? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we'd bought a property when we were still in Australia in North Canterbury off Trade Me Sight Unseen. All oh, right. Um, <laughs> there was a bit of a risk, you might say, but um, it had a little flat in one of the sheds, the two big sheds on the property. So we were sort of cooped up in this tiny little space for three years while we built the house, really. Brilliant. So obviously, you know, you, this book is about you growing up in the 60s in Christchurch, and then you spent quite a bit of time in Australia after that with your husband. Yeah. Is that what made this book extra special, you know, that time away from New Zealand? Um, I think it, it did sort of make me think about um, what I'd left behind, you right. know. I mean, because it's a totally different life in Australia from what I had in uh, mm. growing up in Christchurch. So your parents have obviously passed away, um, so they didn't get to read the book, but your yeah. brothers and sisters, I mean, how did they react? Because it must have been all about their childhood memories as well. Uh, well, I didn't get much input from them uh, because it was, uh, I wanted to spring it on them, really. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and how did that go down? Uh, well, only one of my sisters has read it so far, so they've still yet to react. I know, and, and as an author writing about your family in a book that's public, it must get quite nerve-wracking because there could be something in the book that they're not happy with. Has she been happy with the result, your sister? Well, that's the thing. I mean, the, the one sister who, who I've written probably the most controversial things about that were the funniest, uh, I'm afraid she's no longer with us. But. Right. So she can't argue and deny it, you see. <laughs> and the thing is, too, is that you have very different memories. I know my sister and I, we remember events differently, but we also have completely different events that I don't remember some of the things she talks about quite well, frequently. that's right, and your memory is a bit of a fallible animal too, you know, I mean, Full of holes. you don't really know <laughs> if it's really happened what, the way you remember it, but um, I've written it the way I remembered it, so hopefully it won't cause a, a, a war in the family. family. right, yeah. <laughs> well, without giving too much of the book away, what was it like growing up in the 60s? What were some of the, the quirkiest um, things you remember? Well, it I sort of felt like I was c cocooned in my mother's cocoon for a long time and I, I was fighting my way out of that, you know, for probably 10 years. Right. Um, and because there was a lot in the world that she didn't want me to know about, of course, <laughs> mothers being mothers. Um, but the, um, there wasn't much uh, television uh, at all. I, I, we didn't get television until 1966, I think. Right. Um, we didn't have a telephone till 1965, so it, it was really a, a sort of a um, very low-tech um, growing up period. Mm. Quite different to today, isn't it? Imagine putting, imagine time travelling someone from today, mm. a child, back into that era. It would be yes, uh, they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know what to do with themselves, would they? So, <laughs> what did you do with yourself? Uh, well, I um, avoided my mother a lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I took off on my bike whenever I could, and. Um, uh, well, mostly that, but... Um, and we always knew, too, what, I guess, what the neighbours were doing, because in your book there's a fascinating story about one of the neighbours who ended up shooting his wife, who luckily lived, and then did he shoot himself? He shot himself, yes. Um, that was... I was very, very young at that point. Um, uh, a terrible tragedy, mm. but um, I think it was a result of war trauma that he'd uh, sustained in right. World War Two. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was a, a terrible thing. Yeah. Gosh. Geez, you've covered a lot in this yeah. book, haven't you? Um, <laughs> you talk about revisiting places of your childhood too, like your corner dairy and things, and the memories that come back for 40 years' worth of them. Um, but then the 2011 earthquake has obviously mm. changed all the landmarks. And your school, your old school, was earmarked for demolition, wasn't it? It was. Um, 
I think it's still there. Uh, it's not used as a school anymore, but um, I did actually have a little walk through it with my husband one day, the same day I revisited the, the milk, uh, the, the dairy, um, and the murder house is still there. Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, the old murder house. <laughs> there's a, there's Good a, times. <laughs> a memorable story in, in my book about a visit to the murder house, so that sort of was quite uh, an event in my childhood trying not to go to the murder house, but of course she didn't have any choice. Mm. I don't know if they still have murder houses, do they, in school? Well, probably not enough from what I see in the news. <laughs> mobile, I think, ones, mobile generally. ones, yes. Yeah, generally. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and that's the great thing with your book. I mean, you know, there are moments where you laugh, there are moments where it's quite, you know, sad, And uh, mm. but it's a great trip down memory lane, and congratulations. Everyone thank should you. go and read it. Yeah, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, yeah. thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah.